Nick DeVries has enjoyed a pretty shocking start to his F1 career and it looks like things have gone from bad to worse. With no points in his first 10 races and a former race winner in Daniel Ricciardo waiting in the wings, it looks like DeVries' time has run out. Now Red Bull is renowned for being ruthless, just ask Alex Albon, but even for their standards, this seems harsh. Do you want to know why Red Bull sacked DeVries? It might not be what you expected. Is Daniel the right option for Alpha Tari? And what does this mean for Perez? Stick around to the end as it looks like there's even further bad news for Andretti after Toto and Andretti's latest statements. Let's be honest, if you didn't see that Nick DeVries was going to be getting the sack, we're not sure you've been watching the same F1 races that we have. We were actually at Silverstone this weekend, and you could just see that Nick DeVries was far off the pace. I mean, he was last again. He's by no means a Latifi, but he certainly is struggling. Now, he is an F1 rookie, and you would have expected him to have more than 10 races to prove himself, but it seems like there was more than one reason why he got the sack, and it's not really what we expected. The real question is, was Nick DeVries set up for failure from the beginning as he wasn't even Red Bull's, sorry, I mean Alpha Tauri's first choice as IndyCar racer Colton Herta had been approached only for the FIA to block the move, and Alpha Tauri chief Franz Tost wanted Mick Schumacher to fill Gasly's seat. He was overruled though, and DeVries was chosen to race alongside Yuki Tsunoda. He was Marco's choice after a meeting between them in the weeks following that impressive Monza performance. Marco admitted this week that Tost wasn't the only one that preferred another option, Red Bull team principal Christian Horner, the Austrian told the Inside Line podcast, disagreed with his choice. Not often, but sometimes we do disagree, he said. The last one, I would say De Vries. Basically, it's Alpha Tauri, but we're a big family and we get opinions. Horner was not a fan of De Vries. I would say at the moment, it looks like Horner was right, said Marco. So then, surely Marco has to take the blame for De Vries' unsuccessful stint in F1. Let us not forget that De Vries is a Formula 2 and Formula E champion, and has driven WEC machinery as well as being the Mercedes F1 reserve driver. He is a versatile, capable driver, but as many before him and many after will find, sometimes that's just not enough to survive the Piranha Club. This season was arguably the hardest season for a rookie to join. Bahrain was the only conventional circuit until the Spanish Grand Prix in June, during which time street races in Saudi Arabia, Australia, Azerbaijan, Miami, and Monaco were held. Azerbaijan was also the first F1 sprint event of the season, meaning only one practice session was available to De Vries during his first visit to Baku in Grand Prix Machinery. Both Sargent and Piastri have struggled this season with their best showing finally coming out at Silverstone. Notably, both have not had the extra pressure put on them in order to improve their results. The same cannot be said of Nick, with Alpha Tauri in a bit of a transition, was it really fair to give him the boot so early? The outgoing team principal even said he did not trust his engineers after the Saudi Grand Prix. That is not a welcoming environment for a rookie, even one as versatile as De Vries. How can he even begin to prosper and knuckle down if the boss launches such extraordinary broadsides against his own team. In the end, as soon as De Vries received a hurry up from Marco, the outcome was inevitable. De Vries deserved at least one entire season to get himself bedded in, but unfortunately for him, he went to the one team where that was just not going to happen. Marco must realize that not all drivers can be plugged in and played like batteries. Each is different and can germinate into a capable and handy driver with a little bit of TLC. Well, whether De Vries was going to find his mojo, we will never know. Formula One is is a pinnacle of motorsport and in the end, only the best to make it. The man stepping in to replace De Vries will be none other than everyone's favorite Aussie racing driver, Daniel Ricciardo. See how we said racing driver because we know that everyone's favorite Aussie is really Kylie Minogue, with Franz Tost confirming that Ricciardo will be coming back. I'm very pleased to welcome back Daniel to the team, said Franz Tost, Scuderia AlphaTauri's team principal. There's no doubt about his driving skill and he already knows many of us, so his integration will be easy and straightforward. The team will also profit a lot from his experience, as he is an eight-time Formula 1 Grand Prix winner. I would like to thank Nick for his valuable contribution during his time with Scuderia Alpha Tauri, and I wish him all the best for the future. You do have to consider that Daniel Ricciardo made a very big U-turn about his future in a recent interview. Before the Australian Grand Prix, he was stated as saying that he didn't want to come back and be at the back of the grid, he wanted to join and be competitive. Then all of a sudden, he changes his mood and said he wouldn't mind joining the AlphaTauri team. This is pretty suspicious and makes us think there's some talk going on behind the scenes, with Horner saying that he was super impressed by Daniel in the recent tyre runs. It's great to see Daniel hasn't lost any form while being away from racing and that the strides he has been making in the Sims this season translates to on track. 
Horner said. His times during the tire test were extremely competitive. It was a very impressive drive, and we are excited to see what the rest of the season brings for Daniel on loan at Scuderia AlfaTauri. Such was Daniel's pace around Silverstone that he would have been in P2 during the recent Silverstone race. However, it must also be said that conditions were better and a far more favorable tire was used. We're not going to lie, we can't wait to see the Honey Badger back in a car. We also love the idea of a comeback story and Ricardo finally getting to shut his critics up and show them what he can do and that he hasn't lost it, and he certainly seems up for it after his recent statement. A smiling Ricardo, who had hinted that he was mentally ready for a return to F1 after a few months out of racing, summed up his return, I'm stoked to be back on track with the Red Bull family. So this is all great, but why didn't Red Bull or AlphaTauri give Nick more time to prove himself? 10 races is nothing, and surely he would have improved. Well, according to multiple sources, the decision to sack Nick was due to the sim data being compared by Yuki, Daniel, and Nick himself. Nick failed to meet the sim benchmarks that Yuki set. According to reports, he was given a few more rounds to hit those benchmarks on the track and he just couldn't. Now there is another reason why Daniel may have replaced Nick, and it's none other than commercial. Think about it. AlphaTauri is going to go through a total rebranding process. It's no secret that the team is facing a huge upheaval, and Daniel Ricciardo is a lot more marketable than Nick DeVries adding an extra edge as to why they selected Daniel Ricciardo. But why Daniel and not Liam Lawson? Many had expected that the impressive Kiwi would be stepping in and not the Honey Badger, but the reason behind this is due to Red Bull not wanting Liam's development to be hindered mid-season and his confidence to be shot by driving the AT04, which let's be honest, is crap. Liam is seen to be the future, but depending on Ricardo's performances post-Hungary, he may only get the seat in 2025 and to get a seat earlier may need to leave like Alex Albon did in order to get one. So what does this mean for Perez in the long run? Right now, Red Bull don't have a replacement for Perez, with it being expected that Yuki will follow Honda to Aston Martin. Him. Post 2024, the seat is very much open. Marco did recently come out and say that he saw Lando Norris as an ideal driver to partner with Max. He has a contract in McLaren until 2025, but is by far the strongest of the young drivers. He would also suit Red Bull best because of his youthful character. And it's no secret that Max and he are good friends, said Marco. We are not sure who would replace Perez because quite frankly he has not been up to scratch in recent races, and if Red Bull wants to dominate the constructors like Mercedes did, then they need two competent drivers that are able to push each other. Lando would be great, but is it the best move for him, as Red Bull is very much set up to favor Max. Only time will tell if Lando comes to Red Bull, but one thing we've all been waiting for is news as to what is happening with the Andretti bid, with Toto saying once again that there is no space for a new team. Our position was very clear, buy a team. But you know, there's a lot of consequences. When you look at qualifying sessions, I mean already now we're looking like a go-kart track. We're tripping over each other, said Wolf on Friday. This would be great if Andretti could buy into a team, with Andretti hitting back at Toto about the whole situation. We've tried. Nobody's interested. We've been to every single team. They keep saying buy a team, but nobody wants to sell. You go there. They're not even interested in talking. I've been there, done that. Everybody has their own reasons why they're doing things. They're trying to protect their own interests. I can't blame them. Everybody's been looking out for themselves. When I said that, I got criticized because I don't agree with it. Andretti told race fans.